just wants to make me want to go to sleep. <laughs> Basically. It's one of those, like, just take a nap all day. <laughs> no, but I love it. Well, today we have an amazing special guest. Thank you guys for tuning in again at Love, Money, and Game Show. So I have Jocelyn again for the second time because we bad. love her. <laughs> and she's always so beautified, all in oh, pink. Thank you. I love it. Love your hair and oh, her I did makeup. Wear pink last time, didn't I? <laughs> <laughs> yes, you did. <laughs> so today we're gonna talk. Well, we we spoke a little bit about what we're gonna talk today, and it's amazing. It's gonna be a little bit more deep, deep thoughts. <laughs> but first, we want to know, Jocelyn, all right, so what's your sign? What's your horoscope says about your sign? Okay, well, my sun sign, which I assume that's what you're asking me, mm -hmm. is my is Aquarius. Okay. So I'm an Aquarius baby. Aquarius Birth from two girl. Leos. <laughs> Crazy. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's very unique. It's very Because I think Leo and Leos, are, it's, I don't the know. Leo and Aquarius are opposites. Yeah. Yes. So, wow. Okay. Yep. So, tell me a little bit about your sign then. So, what does it say about your personality, about love, about everything? Yeah. Well, well, what I know about Aquarius as one of what I've read and I think what people generally know about mm -hmm. Aquarians is um, we're really known for being humanitarian. So, we like really care about mm -hmm. the people, like um, human rights, that thing, which I definitely relate to. Um, friendships are really important to Aquarians. Like we're all it's almost more important to us than like romantic relationships like we are very oh, wow, we take friendships very seriously um with that being said as far as the romantic side and even in friendships we can be known as being like detached or aloof kind of like airy you know airheaded mm -hmm. so a lot of times they've... people think that aquarians are like non-emotional or uh -huh. like cold because we have this like uh, aloofness but Maybe because you guys like and really enjoy your alone time, mm -hmm. right? You really enjoy like having those moments. And I think um, it has to be a perfect match to understand that you need your space. Yeah. You know, a lot of the times. Yeah. So. Well, gotta... the reason behind it too is because it's kind of oxymoronic to me because the Aquarians are like very, very, I mean, I don't know if people know much about Aquarians, but they're a very important sign for the rest of the signs because we're like the water bearer, mm -hmm. right? So like we are a conduit of water and information. So that means like we're highly sensitive. So like I can feel, like people talk about empathy, you mm -hmm. know, being um, an empath. I think a lot of times they just mean that they're emotional. Like there's a difference between being an empath and just being an emotional person. Mm -hmm. I don't consider myself to be overly emotional, but I've always been very empathic, meaning that I can feel <coughs> what others feel. Mm -hmm. Down to animals, like ev like I always have been able to just feel like everything. And so being a humanitarian, caring so much about everything, it's like you really, because we care so much about everything, we don't, we can't really care completely about one person all the time if mm -hmm. that makes sense because it's like we're gonna like give you our love while we're here but then i'm gonna go over here and i'm gonna mm -hmm. give all my love here and i'm gonna go you know so it's like gotcha. you're kind of moving around so people feel like oh well like mm -hmm. you're too detached you know mm -hmm. so it's kind of interesting yeah you know what but it's very important because sometimes we we kind of want people to be the same and hello to you guys over here too Hi. <laughs> we're also live on instagram on her page what's your page love just Joss, underscore J-U-S-J-O-S. There you go, so you guys can follow her. So, um, thank you guys for tuning in. I can't see from far away, but thank you again for tuning in. Um, and here as well, guys. But I, I think it's very important, right, what you just said. Um, sometimes we want people to be just like us. And, and honestly, we need people as yourself to be humanitarians, because maybe sometimes, my sign is Sagittarius. Mm. And Sagittarius... <laughs> Makes I so think, much yeah. sense. <laughs> now you get it? Yes, now I get it. <laughs> well, tell me what you think, you, what, what you know about, what know about um, Sagittarius. Sagittarius? <laughs> that, I love her, um, her, her, her gesture about that. Yeah, well, <laughs> because funny. Sagittarians are so like, whoa. Yeah, we are Like, they're special. a lot. Yeah. <laughs> well, one of my best, well, my, my best, my childhood best friend growing up was Sagittarian. So very, very like fun loving, like life loving, like they want to mm -hmm. do stuff. Yes. Like, they're like, like she always had a plan. Like I used to always go with her on the weekends and we would just be going off and doing things.
things. We're adventurous. Like, we love adventurous. Continuous adventure. Yeah, like, lots of energy. Get, yes. People per person. Like, she had lots of friends. Like, you know, everybody. Very charismatic. Like, they like to talk and those things. So, that's what I get about Sagittarians. Very fiery, for mm -hmm. sure. Energetic. Actually, yeah, we are fire. Yeah. It's yeah. funny. And the reason why I mentioned about the horoscope is because, just random, was it like four days ago that me and, um, me and my fiance, we were like, I want to know what your sign is, you know? And then I saw he's Aries and then I'm Sagittarius and we kind of saw, oh, wow. like, yeah, actually we're like perfect match. And that's another story. That's another, <laughs> that's another show about that. Um, yeah. <laughs> so actually, well, it, it, that's what it said. And it makes sense. A lot of things that he was and I am and why we are that perfect match. And it makes sense a lot. Definitely. You know, so it's very interesting this is why i wanted her to know you know wanted to know her her sign and i think it, it's very important because sometimes we can understand personalities i don't know if you guys have done the personality test i've done it mm -mm. um there's different types of personality tests and like you can kind of understand people a little bit more um with knowing the personality and how they take things like i know i'm a very emotional person mm -hmm. like i take things that's how i think a lot of sagittarians are we take um we're just so passionate i think that's what yeah, it is so that's the emotion yeah. so if we do this i'm gonna put all of my love like right here all of my love is flowing mm -hmm. you know and everything when i cook yes, like I all of my love <laughs> every time actually now that i think about it like when i hang out with you it's always a very intense energy mm -hmm. like it's like very enjoyable but i just realized like it's always kind of like heightened you know some people you come around and it's automatically like i'm the type of person that i think my energy is very like calm you are so it's like you like want to take a nap like not in a bad way but it's like no, you're, just, like, you're very serene and comfortable. yeah but i like it because you know i also feel we feel a lot of energies too I'm a bit, we, we've spoken about that and i like it because if when i'm around another sagittarian we can go on and on and on, and it's a non-stop. Like, I love mm -hmm. it. I have a lot of friends. We get along so well. Sagittarians, Sagittarians get along very well. And with Aquarius, too, because we need sometimes somebody to calm us down. You know, in yeah. a sense of, like, not even speaking it, but just your energy, your aura, you know, that I can feel. It's very serene, and I can, like, anything that's, like, jumping around and energy or anxiety, it's kind of like... <laughs> it's kind of jazzy. That's what I kind of feel. Oh, I love I, that. You yeah. know, I just started listening <laughs> That's to what jazz I feel. like really? a year ago. Like I like drive around listening to jazz like my grandpa now. Like it's That's so crazy. Kind of jazzy girl. Like because so that's the kind of feel that I have. It jazz is so like you know very it's subtle. Like a bop, but it's like it is smooth. But it's very smooth. Yes. Yes. I like that. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, thank you for sharing. Um, you know a little bit about your sign, getting to know a little bit more about you. Thank you for sharing what you know know about us Sagittarians. Um, so today we're gonna go a little bit more deep conversation. Um, so, right, this is what we're talking about: love, money, and games. So the first thing is love. So, what is your opinion? And I know she is a philosopher, and she's a big, deep thinker, and I love it because that's how I am as well. And it's just like to me. The world, the way I see it, is just everything has some kind of beauty, some kind of depth to yeah. understand. Yeah. And if you honestly sit down and just kind of, you know, get to know more about, like, let's say nature. Nature is so beautiful. I think a lot of people don't realize that. Yeah. Right? And don't really appreciate it. And I think now a lot of people are, you know, before yeah. you answer, I'm sorry. Um, and and that's that's very deep. Nature means a lot of different things, like trees, water, like you were saying, you know, your water, yeah. I'm sign, I'm fire. So talk about a little bit about what do you think the universal love is? Um, what is your opinion about that? What do you think we lack now in that universal love, especially with a lot of things that happen, and that, especially that you're a humanitarian? What do you see that people don't understand about that? Yeah. Oh, you said a lot, like a mouthful just there. <laughs> I do. So I have like, so much energy. <laughs> I have a lot of energy. I'm right like, now. oh, there's so many things I want to comment on. Okay, start with us what all. you. I agree totally about nature has so many beautiful meanings. And funny thing you say about different trees and and plants and things. I came across like 
last time you asked me about my heritage and where mm -hmm. I'm from and I mentioned that um, I have some Native American heritage so I've been talking to my um, aunt and stuff about that and getting more information so I was doing this research and stuff today and I came across this page that was like a list of like all these different plants mm -hmm. and like their different meanings throughout history or their associations and especially like the Native, the Native American associations right. and it was just so cool like I got like I was literally there for like an hour or two just like scrolling through just reading and thinking about the things that were like the food that I had in my house that was on the list and like the different meanings and just how you can kind of mix all together to make your little magic potion of meanings mm -hmm. when it comes to food so funny you mentioned that because I was totally into like the meanings of nature mm -hmm. today um, but as far as the universal love and just like what's missing, you think, I think, I guess, I would say the biggest thing, which is sort of a, something I realized about myself is empathy. Like, I, I don't like saying that word right now just because it's become so buzzworthy and trendy. Mm -hmm. But I was really thinking about this a few, like a week or two ago and it came to me and I was like, whoa like so many times in my life where I've felt you know how like something happens to you and you have a disagreement with someone or someone slights you in some way and I've had those moments <laughs> yeah we, we all have them I mean that happens all throughout life I and then this week today <laughs> but like you know when you get like you know it's like a little stab like it's a little it rubs jab. You off. Yeah. yeah and but so that memory of that pain like stays with us I don't think mm -hmm. we realize how like those little jabs like add up over time mm -hmm. and I don't know if it happens to you but sometimes I'll catch myself like replaying something that mm -hmm. happened like something that's totally irrelevant like mm -hmm. but maybe a feeling I'm having reminded me of it and so I'll like be replaying those moments and I caught myself like doing that one day and I was like you be playing back a lot of like negative conversations or like things that like mm -hmm. you just felt yucky about before and I was like what's that about and I had to like really dig deep in myself and I realized that the issue of why I even felt why I even felt slighted in those moments is because I did I either felt like this person wasn't like seeing me or wasn't hearing right. me or didn't care to <laughs> and that that is simply empathy like when you look mm -hmm. at it like I wanted someone in that moment I wanted that person to understand how it felt so that they would behave in a better way right and I think so many of us don't do that like I think mm -hmm. so many of us we we in this world and it's taught us to be so egotistical and so self-centered and so we're focused task on our focus zone. yeah my zone productivity like I have you know if everything else is about me and my job and getting to the top or whatever like your thing is so that teaches you to kind of like not care about what other people feel mm -hmm. because we like we literally like there's so much like cancel culture and all that stuff today but we're training ourselves to be like I don't care about other people I have to focus on my success mm -hmm. and so we become dismissive of other people's feelings like how our behavior may affect them and things like that and I think that's the main thing do missing. you think um, it's a culture thing because I had an amazing conversation the other day um, with who, who did I speak to Probably my mom. I'm always the one telling her. I started this talk show with her all the time. Every every time That's I had awesome. some kind of thought. Oh yeah. My gosh. I want to do one with your mom. <laughs> all on my here. thoughts. Yes. That would be let's amazing. do it. Um, but what was I saying? Um, do you think it's a culture thing? Do, right. My question to you first before I, I, I give an opinion about that. Do you mm -hmm. think it's a culture thing? Do you think it's here in America where we see it the most because it's a fast pace? consistent like oh absolutely 100% it's a culture thing like because I think you know when I traveled I see the difference between other countries even from where I'm from very different um, pretty much all the countries even Europe I've had an experience I haven't been there but only my aunt is here um, and she lived in Europe and she's like this is totally different I'm like what do you mean I she's like no like it's totally different mm -hmm. um, share a little bit about that how do you why do you think it's, it's a culture thing how do you how what experience have you had um, yeah, I definitely think it's a culture thing. I've traveled a little bit internationally and just from the traveling I've done like It was like a culture shock to me like the first time I went to Colombia a couple years ago Hey. And it was amazing. Columbia. It was so I love Colombia. Well, I Bogota, love Colombia that's the only place too. I went, but it's beautiful. <laughs> yes, no, I want to go back I'm gonna go back for some for a few reasons, but anyway 
So I went to Columbia and next show. I remember us. being. <laughs> I remember being like really overwhelmed with how kind people were to me. Like, like in America, like I'm like so on guard because mm -hmm. like you really don't know what to expect a lot mm -hmm. of times, and so. I had that same guardedness going, you know, international. I didn't know anybody, so it was just like, I'm trying to speak in Spanish, and I'm nervous, so like mm -hmm. I'm stumbling, and I'm like, I don't want the other person to be irritated Man. with me and things like that. And I just remember, like the one word I remember, um, everybody saying to me it was like, tranquilo, tranquilo, Aww. and like, you know, they were like, it's okay, like take your time, and like they were so patient so kind like to the taxi drivers people always made sure you had what you needed you, you got where you needed to mm -hmm. go like it was very much ooh, it's like what's going on there sorry it was like Hi. bopping oh okay, okay. <laughs> um we're gonna twist so you guys can but see yeah <laughs> i i remember feeling that kindness and then i came back to america and it there was a stark difference it was like the, it was like they had customer service to such another level. Even like going to restaurants, mm -hmm. like a la orden, like as soon as yeah. you walk in, like they're very much like, I'm mm -hmm. here to service you. And the money we were paying is like nothing compared to how much yeah. money we spend over here. And they were so just like service oriented without any expectation mm -hmm. of anything additional. So that was my proof that, you know, it definitely culture affects. Mm -hmm how we feel about things. I definitely agree. <clears throat> and I think it has different factors in my opinion. Um, one, because I actually, I was born in Nicaragua, I came here when I was five. So pretty much all I knew was the, you know, the culture here and all of that. But then my parents, crazy idea, but I'm, in a way I'm thankful because I learned a lot. They sent me when I was 13 and a half. So I experienced the two years and a half being there. So it was a huge culture shock. Mm -hmm. So, and then aside from that, places that I traveled, and I was in Colombia in 2015. I was there for four months in the capital, Bogota. Um, I definitely want to go back because I haven't gone to Cali or any other places. Yeah, which me either. They say it's beautiful. Right. But I experienced that as well. Actually, people call Merced. Merced is kind of like saying your honor or, or saying yes, ma'am, or majesty, actually. That's what oh, it wow. means. Oh, wow. That's beautiful. So it, everybody was so polite. It, they were so nice. I really didn't hear anybody like, bickering or I don't know it was just such a nice feeling and <clears throat> I was like you know what why the difference and then I've gone to other countries as well I've heard of Europe and I think it's just um, I think they're a little bit less stressful I know some may disagree and some may agree and what I mean is being less stressful then I think you can kind of have that feeling of I don't know. I mean, you should always be kind regardless, but right. I'm saying, but when you're stressed and your mind is like, I have, I have to go, I'm on the run. Like, yeah. you know, like four is coming. You're always on the run, you know, like running, well, running. Because you're like out of tune with so, your natural being. You're not like right. when you're stressful and you have anxiety, mm -hmm. you hold your breath, like you don't breathe normally. Yeah. Like that's taking you so out of our tense. natural state. You're always yeah. tense. So you don't mean to probably be mean to somebody or come across the wrong way. It's just you're like, I get it, you know, I want to feel for you, but it's just right now, I'm I have to take care up, of this. Yeah. And it is a culture thing, because if you see in those countries, you know, like here, example, I know that here, uh, when I used to be in the corporate world, you can only have 30 minutes, which is a little crazy, because it took me from here to the microwave 10 minutes, and that time I would go to sit down, and my 30 minutes are done. Mm -hmm. So having that fast pace, also, which I know I can, let's talk about my country, right? Nicaragua. Also over there, like when you own a house, you own the entire house. There's nothing else you pay. You know, maybe some taxes, but that's it. So you're you're comfortable. That's that's like a piece yeah. that you have. Um, a lot of people, everybody in my family, uncles, grandparents, everybody has a home they own over there. Everybody. It's very rare to see somebody that doesn't have a house. Even if it's the smallest little cube house, they have a home. And here it's different. Most of us, you know, most of the people are renting, you know, they do own a home, but it's it's fast paced. It's like, like what's going on with COVID-19 right now. You know, thankfully some are being nice and, and very helpful, but most are not. It's like, I gotta pay bills. So they're like, you gotta pay the bills. You have to pay this lease. You have to pay this car. I'll give you a month or I'll give you, you know, maybe a few days. But it's, it's just like, yeah. you, you're so stressed. You have to, you cannot sit and relax. 
So I think that's why it's a culture thing. Maybe, you know, I feel like they're more in a little bit more relaxed zone. So my, my aunt, she's from Nicaragua. She went to live uh, in Spain. And um, it's very different. She came here. She's like, over there, it's like a regiment. Oh, she was in Spain. Um, I, I don't remember which part. It's a regiment where you work and then you have two hours. Oh, yeah. A break. Have a siesta. Where it's like a nap. Siesta mm -hmm. is nap. Like, all I remember having like a siesta. You have siesta. a huge lunch and then you have a siesta. Yeah, and I think it's bias or, or mm -hmm. maybe I'm, I'm using the, the words wrong. You, you correct me. Very, or to me, it's like uh, hypocritical, I would say. I don't know. Where they teach you this when you're in kindergarten. Nap time. And then you don't do that and in middle school you go, or high like, school. Nap, what? Right, but they do that in Spain. Like yeah. they have these two hours with siesta so you can go drink your wine, relax, take a nap, and then come back to work. If I had that, I think if we had that here in America, I think we would be more humanitarian. We'd be more relaxed. <laughs> I think so. No, I definitely think I don't know. so. I mean, you need to rest. <laughs> we're like over here. We're like. It's just like, we got to go. We got to go. We're like, just like. Even doing this, this video, like, we, we okay, we, okay, we're tired. We're yeah. Go. I don't know. <laughs> I don't even know what we're going. I don't know where we're going. Like, we don't have, it's, we're, everybody's on But it's There's just that to energy. Yeah. It doesn't right. feel like it's very structured. I mean, that's that's yeah. what they call the matrix. Like that's right. we're we we're all in this like game, and that's right. that's how it's organized. Mm -hmm. You know, those are the rules. Right, and it's not saying it's a bad or a good thing. It's just it to know the difference. <laughs> I think it's in a way it's bad, but then I see the other side, where America is a place where everybody in those countries, everybody wants to come here. They die that's true. along the way because this is the dream. Sometimes they don't understand but what do the dream But do you think is. that could be a case of, like, the grass is greener syndrome? Yes. Like, they don't know until they yes. get here that, like, oh, my and God. And it's not. Because I tell people, mm -hmm. like, we can even talk about, you know, just any country. Mm -hmm. Any country. I even tell, like, I was talking to my mom, and I'm like, Mom, I know we always say, and I was talking to my fiancé, too, about Cuba. And I know Cuba, you know, has gone through a lot more. But I honestly think also is a mindset in this sense. You know... Like I said, they have a little bit more freedom. My grandma, my gra my grandma, grandpa, my uncles, my aunts, they all have a house, but they, they have freedom. That's their home, they mm -hmm. own it. They actually, over there is different, where you can actually, like the living room, they convert it into like a store. Right. So that's like the store inside oh, okay, your nice. house. Yeah, that's the majority of it. And that's the- Here, you know, you have to have permits over there too, but it's not as stressful as here. So, but it, it's, it's so different in that sense. But what I think is the grass is greener on the other side. They don't understand that the, the dream, the American dream is, yeah, you'll get all these things, because it, but you work hard. This is why this fast pace, you don't really eat, you eat 30 minutes and you got to in and out, because you're working hard, you're working, 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 and then you have this money where you can actually enjoy. I think the green grass is good, and I always say, you know, they, they have a good, um, a, a good, they're good. Yeah. You know, sometimes we say, oh my God, they're so poor, poor thing. I'm like, I actually think we're the poor ones. Yeah, I in mean, poor has of, more to do than in just... A, in a mentality. Yes, exactly, in spirit, in, in, men, in the mental wellness, yeah. in wellness in general. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. It's just like, if you have all of this and everybody's like depressed and suicide rates are up and things like that, like then what's really the point, mm -hmm. you know? Right, right. So talking about the love universe, so we went, we, we, we kind of... Went, went into deep, the love. deep, deep. So I think one of the it's things. All about love. Yes. <laughs> spread it, spread it. <laughs> um, one of the things that we thought, you know, why maybe the love universe is is a little bit less here. Have we felt? It's because, you know, maybe a culture thing. What else do you think could be? Obviously, you know, it's a mindset. Honestly, it doesn't matter what you do or how fast, you know, quickly your pace is. I think we all at the end have to have, you know, that heart. And really empathy. Mm -hmm. So, tell us a little bit about that. How can we turn it around? You know, being okay, it is a culture. We are used to being this fast pace. Like, what do you do? To Aside from you being an Aquarius and this is who you are. <laughs> like, like, what do I do to like counteract the fast pace? Yeah. Um, and having that empathy, that love. Well, the the empathy and the love that comes naturally, but I do sometimes. I take a moment like sometimes I think we're a little too quick to respond you know a little mm -hmm. too quick so yes just taking time to like be present and take things in like what's happening how am I feeling 
if you're interacting with someone, like what is this exchange? How could this be affecting them? So really just slowing down is a huge, it's a simple solution. And I think people want like some, I think you want this like complex mm -hmm. like answer, but it's very like slow down. Mm -hmm. Like that's, that's one thing. Okay. Um, and then take care of yourself, you know, your mental health. A lot of us neglect that, our self-care. Even I get to doing that. Like, I had just cut off a bunch of my hair because it had been like, I don't even know when was the last time I had trimmed my hair. And so my ends are all split. And I'm That's just like, thanks. Thanks. You did a good job. You did it yourself? Yeah, I did. Nice. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> That's what's been, te That's what I. this COVID-19, the little pause there, mm -hmm. commercial pause, I think it's taught us a lot to go back to the basics. You know, we are thankful for these local businesses where you, or I can go and do my hair fast paced, but I feel like it kind of hit home. Like, you know, relax, take care of yourself, like you said. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you have somebody where you go to, you know, to the salon and they do it for you, but it's it's just so beautiful. I don't know. I think the enjoyment of you doing so your hair. I did my hair like too. You have to pour into <laughs> I did yourself. Black yeah. yeah. Like, I think, and that's another, that's a big thing. Like, if you don't take that time to care for yourself and love for yourself and listen to yourself and, like, how am I feeling and, like, mm -hmm. what do I need? Like, it's going to be very hard for you to do that for other people. Right. So, that's probably the key right there. I think that's the biggest key. I mm -hmm. think you said it aside from, you know, uh, a saying a little bit of culture. Yeah. But I definitely agree because I've experienced it and I experience it constantly. Just yesterday, I was talking to my mom and I'm like, you know, mom, and she loves it. Because <laughs> I always come with these ideas and I, and I don't think it's me. I think it's the universe teaching me, mm -hmm. teaching us constantly. And I'm glad we're going to go back to the cooking. Okay. because of what I'm going to say. It's not a coincidence you said that. Really, like you're putting the ingredients and all the things together. Oh, yeah. You know what? It's it's crazy because yesterday I had that. I'm like, you know, like sometimes why do I feel like I do? I have responded quickly. I think I've offended somebody. And that's not me. That's really not me. I'm not this person. You know, I'm a Sag. We're, we, we, we try to make the circle. We're all good. Let's get, you know, let's, yeah. let's all get along. Love. And, and I'm like... You know, I feel like, I think I have to always have things that make me happy mm -hmm. and think it that way. Like I, I um, before, you know, you think, okay, you have to be healthy, of course, you, you know, you're supposed to sleep, but that didn't work just thinking that. And just yesterday, just it hit me in a sense of like, I have to do things that make me happy. Like example, things that make, they're satisfactory. Yeah. Um, meaning like when you're really hungry, you want to, oh, you're, you know, you're hungry and you eat something, you feel so like, oh my God, it feels so good. When you're thirsty, you feel so good. Mm -hmm. When you like, I dance, I wanna dance, you feel oh so good. Yeah. When you're like, I wanna eat that dessert, you feel so good. So things that put you in a good place, things that you, you makes you happy. And that's the way I'm looking at, yeah. at it now. Just keep those in your environment. So I yes. keep adding more things that right. make you happy, like to your right. daily routine. And talking about food, I had a conversation years, years back which was like alkaline, you know? Mm -hmm. And also, um, I thought you were gonna talk about that, so I was like, ooh, it's interesting. Mm -hmm. Where they said that depending where your culture, where you were from, or what you, what you, what, like you were, like your, your ancestors, you had to eat certain foods. Certain foods make you feel, and then, and then that's one thing. And another one was depending what certain foods you eat, that's the kind of feeling you're gonna have. Mm -hmm. So oh, yeah. talk about that. Because I know you said, I got to put these ingredients, and it seemed like it was fun. She's like, oh, this is going to make me happy. This is cool. This is, you know, like, just putting yeah, all that together. It's like a And that's potion. love. That is love yes. universe. Yes, absolutely. 100%. I mean, the fact that we even have food is just, like, okay. show straight up love from the universe. It's just like, here you go. Like, the earth is just like, whatever you want, like, whatever you mm -hmm. need, like, I got it. And, and it makes you, you happy. It. Who here eats food and doesn't make them happy? It like, does. your body, you know... It, you got to put your body, your body is the one that reacts, mm -hmm. you know, with like whatever reaction, you know, angry, sad. Yeah. And whatever you put in it, that's what's, you know, coming You're out bringing of it. forth. Because basically, to, to simplify it, to break everything down, yes. basically, everything is energy, which I think at some point we all know that. Like, if you don't know that yet, just take a basic physics mm -hmm. one class. I'm sure someone is offering a free course right now during the quarantine. For you too. So, or I mean, YouTube. Everything's on YouTube. Okay, so this is so like, because I know I can be very like, uh, you know, like spiritual and ethereal and all these things, but actually at my fundamentals, I'm a scientist. And so a lot of things I say are based on science as well. 
So at the basis of everything, everything is energy, right? It all breaks down into these very small, few mm -hmm. individual categories. And so whatever you are eating is composed of different mixtures of that energy, yeah. right? And so when you're taking it in, it's like you're transmuting yourself with different energies because you are energy. I like the way so, you said it. Yeah, I that's, have not heard it in that way, transmuting that energy inside you. I'm going to use that. Cool. Yes, you're transmuting it. It's like you're transforming yourself. You're feeding yourself. You're giving yourself like this specific, this corn or this broccoli, like whatever it is you're eating, this green juice has this right, you know, this specific structure of molecules that gives these benefits. Mm -hmm. And when you take it in, you're like transforming yourself to match that energy. Like you're matching the frequency of it. Mm -hmm. So yeah. it's very important to know what ingredients you eat. Now, let me tell you, I know you guys saw the cup of Chick-fil-A. Chick-fil-A is my go-to if I do fast food. So when I first started, you guys saw that I was like, <laughs> so every time I eat, because it's carbs, it has bread, and every ingredient, I love, I'm actually, I love cooking at home. That is like yes, my thing. Yes, I see your videos, cooking, yes. so cute. <laughs> Next show, she's cooking because I want to taste her. It's very good. She actually, we did one, right? We did yeah, we friends. did a, um, It was amazing. Yeah, it was really cool. It was so much that fun. was fun. I, I want to do it. another one of those. Let's do it. Yeah. All right. So, house. so yes, <laughs> yes. So, um, yeah, so this food that I ate, so right now it made me feel, I feel like, you know, especially when you eat carbs or certain foods like that, um, it makes you feel like heavy. Yeah. That's how I felt. And I'm like, I couldn't catch my breath. <laughs> I don't no. know if you guys noticed. Um, so you are right. You're transmuting all that energy. Okay, think of what you're eating like. And I don't want, and I don't want to make this sound like grocery order. Anything, no, it's true. But it's like, I know this. It's I do. Just, I, I'm not like anti. I know better. Like that, but it's just like <laughs> it's think bad. about it. Like you're eating a dead animal. Like you're eating something that is dead. You're gonna feel heavy. Like it's mm. death. <laughs> so like versus when you eat a salad or you think eat of that. or you eat you know some fruit, something that's alive. Mm. It's like the energy. I can tell the difference, especially if I do like a, a really strong detox mm -hmm. for a while and I don't have like any animal products for like months. Mm -hmm. And then I'll like eat like even an egg I remember or something. when you did that one time, you did the vegan. Yeah, I mean, I, I eat mostly vegan mm -hmm. or plant-based anyway, but right now I'm definitely like detoxing. Mm -hmm. um, but anyway, if you do that for a while, your body starts to change and you become, your everything becomes much more sensitive. Mm -hmm. Your taste, your digestive system. And I remember eating like, I think it was like an egg after coming off of a detox one, just like one egg. Mm -hmm. And like everything else had been vegetables. And that egg, it was like I could just feel it. Like everything else that I was eating that was live foods or like vegetables, I, it moved. Like nothing felt stuck. Mm -hmm. As soon as I ate that egg, it was like, this is just sitting in the pit of my Whoa, stomach. what is that? Yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah, it definitely, and it's like that's that dead energy. Like all the other energy was moving because it's alive. It's like still. Uh, you know what? I never yeah. saw it that way. Today's an amazing conversation. I need to hear this. I, I've been trying to, like, so, you know, I've been leaving things little by little, like those detox moments. Like mm -hmm. I'm, I can't, I haven't been like, I'm going to be a vegetarian. Because I think when I put my mind on that, then it's like your body's like, Oh my gosh, she's gonna be a vegetarian, and it's so hard. And then you see chicken and visions yeah. and dreams, like right. the food. So I think you just kind of have to transition. I don't know. You to have me. to transition, and that's like, what I mean. Yeah, I you do. Eat red meat I don't. This week. Agree. I'm not gonna eat this. I stopped eating pork. I do red meat once in a blue. Um, chicken, I kind of stop because yeah. it's the one that has the most hormones, and I noticed that in my body that my body was just changing. I'm like, but I don't even eat. At one point, I was so big. I was even getting to size seven the first time in my life. This was like two years ago. Mm -hmm. And um, like, I'm not even eating a lot. You see like two meals a day. And I'm yeah. like, what is it? And I know the body can become acidic if you don't eat, if you eat late. Mm -hmm. But I'm like, that still won't bloat me this much. Then I noticed and I'm like, it's just something like I said, the universe spoke to me. And I looked at this chicken and my parents have a farm mm -hmm. back home in Nicaragua. And no matter what they feed this chicken, it is not big. I was just and when they kill it, it, it is like the, the little head. itty bitty, the like the littlest the thing. Yeah, because that's, that's the other thing. Like the chicken, like no matter that, what it feeds it, like naturally, yeah, because they don't do the right. Holes, of course, like the breast is like this small. So that's what I was gonna say too. <laughs> that's the other difference. Like here, our chicken isn't like normal chicken, like that we ate growing up. Oh. So. Not only is it like dead, but now it's like 
dead and like mutated and, <laughs> and like all these chemicals and stuff so your body is just like what is this like I, it's like a foreign object and that's you why know? i think it's the uh, a lot of different emotions that mm -hmm. we carry oh you care oh for sure because all of a sudden you're like well how, why do and I you feel, feel like depressed this? And, like, and now you feel sluggish yeah. and now you want to take a nap and now yeah. you just you don't or feel anger. so good about yourself you know anger too and you can't like put your point pin, mm -hmm. like pinpoint it and there's other things that contribute to right, that but food will definitely like exacerbate mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. for sure definitely mm -hmm. so that was a great conversation yeah about Universal love. That was very elaborate. I'm sure we can be here and speak a lot more yeah, about it. Yeah, I got lots so, of stuff to say. So, so I'm trying to keep it tame. No, no. <laughs> well, tell us what what else do you think we should talk about? The universal love that universal our audience love? should um, should know or love, even in general. I don't know about finding your mate. About no, I can't finding about the that. right. Well, we already spoke last last time about finding your passion mm -hmm. for your business or what do you want to do in life. So what else do you think we should tell our viewers about universal love? Universal love? Well, I think I pretty much, as far as that topic, I think I got yeah. out everything. But overall, I just want to encourage mm -hmm. self-love and just focus on that and everything else will start to mm -hmm. open up for you, I think. Yes, yeah, I agree. Mm -hmm. I have definitely experienced that in my own life um, because I think we're, well, I have, I think in general, all of us are very tough on ourselves <clears throat> we can hear many great things from people you're amazing you're this but if you don't tell that to yourself at the end of the day when you're home you're looking in the mirror then you know that's what matters at the end your opinion about you mm -hmm. and when that changes I know me doing this what I'm doing right now people are like it's just she's so uh, you know an extrovert and she's so outgoing you have no idea uh, you know what I've been through from like I was outgoing when I was young and then at 13 and a half to like I was now, a few years back, um, I was so shy. I was like sad. I was like very like nervousness. Like it, it, I was just a totally different person, you know? And when I started really like that, like you said, self-love and really like, okay, accept yourself. You know, what can I do about me loving? What things can I bring in? And I was able to you know, bring that out also to everybody else and spread that love. Exactly. So thank you for sharing that. I think that's very important. Absolutely. Um, so next topic. I think next it's topic. it's next topic. We need like running money, money, <laughs> dinero. Money, J-Lo, see, we need the background. Yo quiero, yo quiero dinero. Hey, hey. I don't know that one. Oh, what? Yeah, I don't know like much of J-Lo's stuff. Okay, I'm gonna send it to you. Okay. Yeah, because <laughs> you know what? Okay, random, this is like a random side note, but every time this song, um, oh my God, oh my God, what's the song? Despacito. By Blue Cantrell. Oh, which one? I love her. I know. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I love her. It's that song. It was like uh, the one like hit the she, 90s? Had. she had. Yeah, she had that she had one like big two. hit. It was like um, oh, hit 'em up style. Hit 'em up style. Oh my gosh. Oh, I. Love I that have song. never met anyone who plays with that song. Like this is the first person I've met who actually like has that song <laughs> on the playlist. And every time I used to be in the car with her, like hit 'em up style, come on. So every time I hear it now, I like think of you. Aww. Just random. But I love that. I love it. I feel like you made me love that song more. Yeah. <laughs> now it's like, a good song. It is a good song. But I listen to it. And I was like, her, you know, yeah. It's a, good song. it's a good song. Like the lyrics, it's like. Mm. But also just her, her energy. Yeah. Just singing that song. It was kind of cool. Yeah, it was very it. like. Yeah, it was hip, hip, and fun. <laughs> <laughs> um, so let's talk about dinero, dinero money. Dinero. Um, I think last time we spoke about what was your opinion about it. I think some people have a good or bad opinion about money. Yeah. So let's talk about deep, deep down, you know, deep, deep thoughts about money. What okay. can we talk about it? What can we say about money? Well, what I want to talk about is, I don't know if I brought this up last time, is the poverty mindset. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We did bring it up. Okay, so. And I think that's important. Let's hit that. Yeah, I so think a poverty or a lack mindset, people say, is a huge, huge thing. And I think it is so pervasive. And the reason I know that is because I recognized it in myself. Mm -hmm. Like, I didn't know, first of all, that I, I didn't know I had a poverty mindset. Like, First of all, that word came up to me randomly, and the first time someone said it, it kind of offended me, 
Did they tell they you you say, had a poverty mindset? They didn't say or? that I had a poverty mindset. It was like it was a business that I was running, and I and she was she told me that the way that I modeled was like a poverty model or something like that. Mm -hmm. And I was just like, that must be harsh. Like, mm. yeah, I, I hit I you can, up style. Yeah. That's talking about one of those jabs. That was definitely one of those moments. I can talk about. But those are good we'll moments. talk about mentors yeah. and like people who are like supposed to be in a place of we'll talk about that another yeah. time we'll get back to coaching and like how that should be done correctly because mm -hmm. that was not correct to do anyway going back to the money so yeah that was the first time that like word so i mean i'm grateful for that moment because i became aware of it like it, it hit me in a way that like i'm like damn that bothered me for like so that's deep you know because it like really like sat with me so but over maybe time that's what, i mean I, I know you said that in coaching and i will get that to later mm -hmm. but i think maybe if you really look at it <clears throat> maybe i know and my 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 um on my side like i've heard you know oh you know sweet like over the counter like you know yeah. like soft and i learned but not really but when somebody really said something like that shook your world so yeah. maybe at that moment, it's hard. No, I think it was it. a good thing overall. I don't. Th I okay. think there's a way to talk to yeah, people always, is. but um, you okay. know, you don't have to be. I, you don't have to be like. You don't have to serve it with sugar, but okay. you know, you can be. You can no be direct sugar. without being. <laughs> you can be direct without being crass or like rude. Got you know, it. there's like a fine line. Makes sense. But that takes practice. Um, so, um, yeah. So that 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 word came to my mind and over time I, I started hearing it more started like just knowing about what that meant more and started thinking mm -hmm. about what that meant to me and I realized that oh that's why that bothered me so much because like I have a poverty mindset and that was something that it was no it was of no it was not my fault you know it was just I grew up a certain way I didn't grow up grow up in poverty necessarily I didn't grow up super poor but I grew up with uh bad uh i would say bad reputations of like financial management mm -hmm. you know so me actually seeing that where what i felt like my parents were doing wrong i was like so much running away from like what they were doing mm -hmm. that i was like hindering myself in other ways when it came to money mm -hmm. which is interesting and I, I realized i became like so anxious about money and nervous about money like you didn't felt, want to make that mistake. Yeah, I didn't want to make that mistake. I got to hold on to it. I got to make sure I have yeah. enough savings. I got to make sure that I pay my rent. So it was always like, always very stressful, like on the edge, like mm -hmm. fighting for survival when it came to right. money. Like it was like, it wasn't like. It, it was like an enemy. It, it was, was like an enemy. Like, yeah. Not, and I realized yeah. like, and then and I was always with, with one like change in that mindset came when I realized like, wait a second. I've never not been able to produce money. Mm -hmm. Like I've always, I've been getting, I've been working since I was like 15. Um, always been able to find a hustle, sold candy in school. Like, I mean, I've always been like a hustler type of girl. So I'm not like, well, why are you, you want to buy the sneakers? For real. <laughs> like I'm so, I even went door to door selling ADT security systems at one what? point. Like I've done it all. <laughs> so I didn't, I was like, yeah, why are you so afraid? Like you can do so many things. Who are you? Like, yeah. So that was my first step. And then from that time, it was just so many, I'm still doing Question. it. You unravel What it. is, so then some of our viewers can learn because especially me, like I learn by example. Like mm -hmm. when somebody tells me, okay, I learned this, but okay, what was it? So then I can kind of see that example in my life. Oh, I get it. Okay. I can change it. So what was that poverty mindset that she was saying specifically in your business that you were doing? Were you giving too much free stuff? Were you being too too cheap in your prices? What was it? Yeah, my pricing was way off. Okay. My pricing was so off. Like too, like, too low? So low, so oh, low. Okay. Like it was way too low. And mm -hmm. it was because in my mind, again, it was a survival thing. Like I feel like the poverty mindset is like your base, your, mm -hmm. your decisions are based on survival, not based Security. on thriving and longevity. Yeah. So it's like a lot of short term thought, mm -hmm. like how do I pay my rent? Oh, I can do this. Like my rent's a hundred dollars, so I need to make a hundred dollars. So it's like, no, if your rent's a hundred dollars, you need to make a thousand dollars. Like you know, right, right. So like just enough to to pass to stop to yeah. pass by. Because it's like I feel like a part of you felt like, well, I won't be able to get much more than that. So let me like shoot for a lower, you know, shoot lower, and I'll yep. be able to hit it. I can completely relate yeah. because I've been in that position. I'm still learning. Mm -hmm. Um. Yep. Yeah. Yep. For sure. Yep. And so like you're always just constantly feeling like you got to struggle. Mm -hmm. So in my business, I was like pricing it. I was like, oh, well, she was like, well, how? She's like, well, what's your financial goal or something? I think I said I wanted to make a hundred dollars a day. It was like, 
some arbitrary number mm -hmm. that I felt like a hundred dollars a day seems like enough for me to be able to take care of mm -hmm. my, you know, right. my life. And she was like, well, that's when she said the poverty, mm -hmm. poverty model thing. She just kind of like threw it in there. Right. And then over time I thought it like I continued to do business for years afterwards. And I can see now mm -hmm. as an experienced business person, like, yeah, that is a poverty model because running a business is not just about you paying your immediate needs. It's about mm -hmm. growing something that can potentially pay a bunch of people. Right. So, um, when it, it, it's, it's, I like that you said that mm -hmm. because sometimes we think it's just about us, 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 and, and a, in a good way. Like I know what I'm giving, but it's, it's me. I, I did the good and this is great. But really is about when you have a business, whew, I learned this too, a lot more, mm -hmm. that it's about everything that's around everybody. Mm -hmm. So you gotta, like, you're responsible. Yeah, because it's now like a part of, crazy. like when you decide to start a business, you've now decided to become someone that is like an active participant in community. Mm -hmm. Like you're no longer just like at home do, going to work. Like now like mm -hmm. you're, like what you do affects the members of mm -hmm. your community of that business. So it has to be bigger than you, you know, especially if you plan on being a business that's going to stay around. Mm -hmm. I mean, what's the point then? A business right. is like, a business is so beyond like a person. Like it's a business is like its own spirit almost. Mm -hmm. Like it's like a, its own entity. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And a part of that is going to nourish you, mm -hmm. right? Because you're the creator, you're the founder, you put all the love into it to grow it. But eventually it should grow to be something like much bigger than like what you're just your so life what what made you change that poverty mindset what did you start doing um i became aware of it <laughs> that's so the first step us. one um i started making changes i started to set bigger goals for myself one huge thing i started doing was just changing the way that i managed money so as simple as like downloading the expense manager app Mm -hmm. Major key, download the expense manager app. <laughs> um, <laughs> download the expense manager or something that you're going to use to manage your expenses. That is a really easy and cool app to use. Um, and I was able to see exactly like at any given moment, there was like a snapshot of where I'm at, where I'm going. Like I could look up into a year's worth of like income or expenses and know like this, the full spread of what my life looked like financially. Mm -hmm. And it was so much easier. Like once you see it on paper, it's like so much easier to set the goal. Like, mm -hmm. oh, okay. Well, I'm already, you know, I'm already ahead, mm -hmm. you know, three months on rent. So now that means I can save an extra thousand dollars every month. And then now it becomes like a game because mm -hmm. you can like play with the numbers Ooh, on, you I know, like and that, see them that's changing. The next, next time. Yeah. Okay, and then it's like, it. so that was the next thing was like getting a stronghold on like managing my mm -hmm. money. And then the third thing was like learning how to have fun with it and finding um, the thing that I'm working on now is passive diversifying my forms of income. So I've always had pretty much multiple forms of income, mm -hmm. but I realized they were all active, which means that I had to be there. I had to report mm -hmm. somewhere. I had to, like it took my time. And now I'm learning to get into passive sets of income. So just bought my first stock with my family well Ooh. some stocks so i'm excited about I'm that back. and i have some <laughs> other things that i'm cooking up That's and cool. doing that you start having fun with it and you start looking at money as you have to start remembering that money is everywhere and it's actually very very accessible like, and growth yeah and growth and so but the money can actually grow like it's not like only enough of a hundred dollars and if you put your mindset just a hundred dollars i made and that's what i need to make and that's it so there's no growth because yeah. that you're, you're stuck there and that you know the, that speaking of growth that was another huge realization was movement movement of money is very important see another thing that in my poverty mindset i used to do was try to hold on to mm -hmm. things which you should save but you, your money should not just save, like you shouldn't just be stacking a bunch of savings just for it to save in a savings account or just for you to have a bunch of cash. So different pockets. There's no, your money needs to be moving mm -hmm. constantly because that's the only way you can keep bringing mo new money in. So that means sometimes it has to go out. Like you have to get comfortable with money going out mm -hmm. too, which is a huge thing with the poverty mindset. You don't want to spend anything. But if you start learning how to spend wisely and making your spending investments, then you bring it back in but it can't just sit still like even if you just if you're a person that saves a lot that's really great but you can't let your money sit in a savings account because still money loses money if that makes sense if your money's not moving it will eventually depreciate because of um 
inflation rates. Mm -hmm. So that was huge. Like your money has to move. It has to move. Wow. Yes. You know, you saying that, I also learned that, and I'm sure uh, my fiance is going to love hearing this. He's like, you got to move your money. <laughs> well, I've always been, um, I always been, and I, I learned that from my dad, was like always put different pockets. And mm -hmm. I think we learned that from grandma, where grandma had like, Right behind this book, there's money there, like under the table. Oh, under yes. those under My the mom pillow. was that girl. She's like, she's like, oh, it's like there's stash. a hole over there. That's probably grandma like cut a hole in the wall. So I learned that different pockets. I did learn that part, but kind of like investing, I had to learn that because I was so afraid. I'm like, I rather know where I put it in my pockets, you know, and save it. Mm -hmm. So I also invested, and I actually uh, thank you, Allie, which she is with um, New York Life. Um, she helped me with, which is funny because it's, it, when I was, when I graduated high school immediately, I graduated, I was 18, somebody came into my life with New York Life mm -hmm. to start a life insurance. But we are young, um, which is, this is why we do this. You know, we're entrepreneurs. We're, you know, we're very young as well. It's important to start young, you know, and understand money and understand to invest it because I never thought I'm 36 years old and man if I would have had that already and I started I remember it was like $45 mm -hmm. my my life insurance right now it could have if I would have had there's a difference whole life insurance and the other one I forget the name um it's term it's, life term yeah term life, life. Ah, there you go term life so I have whole <laughs> life so whole life is the one where it's like actually you know increasing so it, every every money that you put in it's always going to be growing mm -hmm. that's what i want i'm like okay i got it but i want it to grow so um you know she helped me with that and it's funny because when i when i did it when i was 18 then you know at one point i stopped like i want to cancel i cannot imagine how much would i had right now yeah you know so i think it's important everybody at that age i was 18 i had just graduated i have the picture it's so funny I think the guys in the picture where I was graduating, I had my hat, we had a celebration of my graduation, my aunt, my little cousins, and I don't know how that guy, I think it was through a friend, a family friend, but yeah, he offered me to do life insurance. So it's good. So I invested in that and I'm actually even taking a course to kind of help my clients and nice. friends as well. So uh, I'm still learning. <laughs> about it so then I, I think it's so important just like myself that I was so scared I think um, a lot of people you know are just so like you said scared I, I rather have in savings I know it's there I got it but if it's not moving especially now which mm -hmm. I think we may have inflation you know because yeah. I mean, we twelve hundred dollars stimulus I just thought about the other day twelve hundred dollars to like aside from the taxes to everybody that's a lot of money. Where's that money come from? Supposedly we're in debt. So <laughs> it had to be they're printing money. That's a whole different story. <laughs> That's right. a whole topic. But um, but yeah, it's important. I'm glad you did the stocks. He's doing the stocks. I'm still learning. Same. Um, so what else did you invest in? Or oh, that's just your first thing. I know we spoke yeah. last year about real estate. I am very big in real estate, aside from me being a realtor, but I just see a good potential only because um, it, it's just real estate. It's always movement as well. People will always need a house to rent. Mm -hmm. So if you have a property that you can, you know, rent it, this little room or, or create oh, a little yeah. duplex, definitely you're not going to go wrong with it. You can't so. go wrong with real estate. You yep. cannot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I agree. I definitely am going to get into some real estate soon. That was my original mm -hmm. plan with this investment fund that I do with my family. Um, which that's, to me, that's how we bought the stock. So that's a, there's another idea for you guys if you're thinking about growing your money and just ways to have more of an abundant mindset. If you're close with your family, you can organize something like um, like me and like five other of my family members. We put in a certain amount of money. You can start small, twenty dollars, fifty dollars, whatever. Every month we send it to an account and we just leave it there. And then after a year, we all we all have like voting points and you decide what we're gonna do with the money. So we decided to put it in stocks with this one. Oh, that's awesome. And, you grow. and so like, you don't have to feel like, you know, if you, don't, if you don't make a lot of money, if you don't have a lot of money to save, you can, if you get together with other people who have you know, your same interest and your mm -hmm. best interest in heart, then 
you can still grow and have that mm -hmm. wealth abundant mindset and just the small amount of just commitment mm -hmm. of $20 a month can make a huge change mm -hmm. and for your whole family you yep. know years down the road yep. so it's definitely doable um you just have to like kind of be like like I say, it's, it's kind of a game. You got to get creative with it. You do. Yeah. It's, it's, I'm glad you said that because two things. One, another thing that I also did is that and my fiance also helped me with this and also reading a little bit about it. It's getting credit cards that, um, that you know, that have cash back. And it's kind of funny because you're like, yeah, why would you want to give me cash back? Like, I'm always and I'm learning to like... Skeptical. I don't yeah. get it. What do you mean? So I'm like, I got the Chase Freedom, and it really does. Like, you know, so what I do, I try to use it all the time, making sure, but it's money that I know that I can actually, you know, that, you have. that I have yeah. it in cash, and that immediately, okay, I put $50 or $200, I have it, and I transfer, and I pay it, right? So oh, I always try to leave a balance. That's always important. That's a credit, credit topic. But it's, yeah, I it's, had to learn that the hard way. <laughs> I think we all. Yeah. We all do. Because I, I want to keep I the zero too. balance. I'm just like, no, make it zero. Make it zero. Yes, I learned as no, well. No, no. Yes. That's another topic. <laughs> yes. Uh, very fun one, too. But yeah, getting credit cards that are cash back. So I did. It was true. I put, it was like up to, I don't remember how much. But um, I got like $500 back. And then oh, next nice. I got two hundred dollars. So of course you got to keep using it. You know, every dollar good, is like though. a point. So they give you a dollar back, a point, something like that. But yeah, it, it's great. So I mean, that's money that you didn't need to do anything about it. Upset the same thing you do with your regular credit card. You swipe. Upset this time it's creating points where you get cash back. And now that so money you I get cash back, well. you can take and invest. Yeah, yeah, of course. And whatever. Exactly. So that that also is that also is a very good point. Yes. Um, the second one, kind of lost my train of thought on that one. It's going to come back. It's going to come back. Well, you were asking me what other investments I made, which I didn't answer. Um, so I invest in my business, of course. Um, and then the yes. other thing Very important that to I always am, invest in your business. So yes. Whatever, like that little, maybe that cash back you get, always put it back. Yes, for sure. Yes. Uh -huh. Um, and then the other thing that I'm going to do next is I want to set up a Roth IRA. So that's my like next investment goal. Awesome. Yeah. That's good. But yeah, I don't. And I think the other day, um, last um, show, we were talking about that you're going to come out with a new product. Yeah, Ooh. I'm working on that. The Exciting. logo is being finished up as we speak. I love it. And I have the meal plans available, That's which will be one of my investment. passive streams. So, yeah. Awesome. Girl, you're doing a lot. I've been trying. <laughs> and, and it's crazy how that one little word. Or that one, you know, maybe it wasn't in the right way, but that conversation that somebody said, you have a poverty mindset. And you're like, whoa, like, that hit you because it hurts. Yeah. But then that kind of changed you, right? Yeah. You kind of saw, okay, what is the message? Aside from the, you know, the little sassiness, maybe. <laughs> Anytime anybody but says anything how, that is like a, that's going to have like a punch to it, mm -hmm. it's a reflection. Um, for, like, we don't like to think of it that way, we but don't. it is a reflection of something inside of us. Because we always like to make, we yeah. always think we're right. But that's, the reason you feel something <laughs> is because it's a reflection of something inside yeah. you. Otherwise, it wouldn't bother you. Mm -hmm. So, like, you know, when that happens, that doesn't mean that the other person is right all the time, but something about it means, like, you need to, like, look mm -hmm. at it a little deeper, and there's a lesson there. I agree. Mm -hmm. So, um, I want to touch a little bit based on poverty. I love that conversation. I've had long conversations, because when I talk about a topic, I can be there for hours, and I drive my fiancé, <laughs> and I drive my mom crazy. They're, like, the first ones I've heard my talk show when I didn't even know it was going to be, you know, a talk show. But I think there's so many people that have a poverty mindset in anywhere they're at, anywhere in the country, anywhere, even now. Let's talk about the situation that's happening. Um, you know, it's crazy when she said, when I was young, I did it too, that I would go and sell like, you know, this box. I remember you buy this box and it had so many different types mm -hmm. of candy and you can go around, you can sell it for like a dollar or two. I would do the same thing as well. Um, because I'm like, if I sell it, if I got it for this amount, I can make like 10 Hustle. bucks. Yeah. <laughs> you bought the I box for like, lunch money. I never forget. <laughs> like, yeah, it's like $35 a box. I don't know, depending. And if you sold each one for a dollar, you make like $45 or 50 I don't know. But it was extra than what you spent. So, um, I think right now, I know it's very tough. I've even gone through, you know, you know, tough in, in my business. 
and thankfully you know I did have a little cushion aside and that little cushion was going down 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 but huh but um oh oh it stopped the live ended oh no are we an hour already oh I guess so um share story yeah it's eight oh yeah we are an hour oh wow Okay. Is, do we have a time limit? Like, how long is this supposed um, to be? Um, this Facebook is supposed to be like an hour. Oh. oh but I didn't know that. Like, I didn't know that you had a time limit. No. Oh, okay, okay, okay. But we like to talk. You want to do it again? Yeah. Okay. This is fun. I love yeah, it. Yeah. Right. I love it. We just, we just, we can talk. <laughs> it's hold, um, hold the profile thing at the top. Press and hold on the left by my picture. Got Gotta hold it. You gotta go home. You Girl. can't do it from there. Girl. No, don't. No, I'm just here. I'll come. I'll come. You go. Sorry, y'all. Ah, okay. Time out. Like, now, Facebook, I don't know if it's an hour, too. But we'll, I think Facebook is longer because I've done them on we'll Facebook. Well, no, now. <laughs> you gonna learn today. Right. <laughs> okay. We're and back. then you can screenshot. Okay. Yeah. Hi. We're back. All right, so talking about a little bit about poverty, I've learned that as well. This is one of the things that my dad taught me when I was young. My dad was one of the, like, uh, dads, we always used to have a roof on the table, we had food, no matter where. And even if I, we lived in the most craziest neighborhoods uh, where I grew, uh, where I grew up, but there was always a roof on top of her head. My dad will actually go and pick up people's trash that they saw trash outside, like the bicycles. They would throw furniture, which I still see people do. And he will turn around, fix it a little bit, and go sell it at the flea market. Mm -hmm. So anybody else, like, will ask him, what do you do? You know, they'd probably be laid off or whatever. Like, oh, I do this. Oh, no, I wouldn't do it. So it's that poverty mindset. Sometimes we don't want to do what we need to do or not what we need to do. Be creative. And we see to see everything that can flow money, which we need, you know, um, be creative and it's okay, you know? Yeah. So I think that poverty mindset a lot of people have and it's, they stuck there and that's when they go into other things, you know, they blame others, they're, they're angry or they're envious, jealous for other people's, you know, um, success. And it really is, they shouldn't be that way because there's always something creative. Your yeah. skill, just look at what your skill is, your talent, you know, and you can always be creative. Um, I think in this, what's going on, a lot of people I know, it, you know, it's, it's crazy, you know, they're laid off and, and some, you know, the hours are being cut off. You know, be creative. There's always, there's always something that you can do and not to have that, you know, poverty mentality, now I'm poor, I'm gonna wait just for the stimulus check, I'm gonna wait for my taxes. Mm -hmm. Or I'm gonna wait, for, or now I don't have this nine to five job. Be creative, you know. I think now, and it's true with where a lot of these mentors, a lot of these social media people say that there's so much to do now. Before you would have to like print a flyer, go in and talk about what your business is or what you want to talk about. Now we could just go live and talk about it, and yep. you know, spark some interest in people, or you just pay for open a up ad. exactly, or open up the interest that people already have. You know, and so a lot of people have been discovered, singers, mm -hmm. artists, everything. Um, so now I think it's more open, you know, I think the universe has opened a little bit more to our favor to just like grasp those opportunities yeah. and do something about it. So, you know, change that poverty mentality, not blame the other person. Yeah, it sucks, you know, the situation, but just be creative. Another thing that I see people do is reselling. I just had an amazing conversation um, with my guest that I'm going to have tomorrow. He's like, you know what? I, I buy things and I resell. And mm -hmm. I'm like, I do the same thing too. Mm -hmm. And, you know, because some people, they don't want to go to the store. They want to go ahead and buy online. So just be creative, guys. The poverty mindset literally is here. It's mm -hmm. not the situation. It's not anything. Another thing that I saw people do, they're still you know, um, construction workers, people that are, that are, you know, working. Um, I, I saw, uh, this family, this, this lady, I think she, she just came from Venezuela and she does lunches from her house. She cooks and she just goes and offers, you know, at offices and say, Hey, I do lunches. So that was creative. 
you yeah. know and it's either that or you just stay home and it's like life sucks like yeah. I mean people I don't are have literally at home like sewing face masks right now you, there's a lot of people yeah. doing that you know and, like, and everything is an opportunity uh, yes even in tragedy that's what I, that's yeah. the word always see opportunity I think I posted that a while back and I've posted many times always see the opportunities in front of you that's what I've learned and I've learned it a little bit through my dad I little bit also in my life because you know you can learn what somebody tells you but literally in your life um you learn it mm -hmm. so I love it I love that you said that seeking opportunities and um and yeah seeing it's very different Change can I add one mindset. more thing to the poverty mindset that I, do. To, I think that adds to it is I think um, a lot of people punish themselves by like doing work that they don't like. So if you like yes. have a job and you like hate it, that to me will can help to contribute to a poverty mindset yes. because it yes. makes it hard to motivate you. Like if uh -huh. your morale is down, like your creativity goes uh -huh. down, like everything is just kind of like muted. And then you don't have as much energy to dedicate mm -hmm. to other things to like mm -hmm. bring money in. So because you dread, and yeah. that's what I think we were speaking last time in the show. That's where we go back to the first subject, mm -hmm. the first topic, love, the self love. So then yep. find you know self love mm -hmm. that was today, and right after you do that, you can be able to bring out everything else. Last time we spoke about finding your passion, finding what you love. Mm -hmm. You know, instead of dreading those moments, you know it is tough. To get out of corporate i did it i resigned in 2014 it was the most the toughest thing that the toughest thing i ever did in my life because i it, i was leaving a comfort zone nine to five i had mm -hmm. benefits it is very tough but i knew that i wasn't feeling you know that's not where i want i needed i i felt i needed to be anymore i wanted to grow so giving yourself that opportunity self-love find yourself to love you know what you do your skills yourself and then go out and find what you're passionate about, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, 100%. Because that's when we spoke about you last time that you found, you know, how you had this in you already, mm -hmm. but then you're like, this is what I really want to do. Yeah, I found another way to express it. Exactly. Yeah. So, it's very important. Awesome, that was amazing. Yes. So, I think in these two subjects, we kind of spoke a little bit about game. You kind of threw in, you know, that's the game. Yeah. The game. So, um, I don't know. Let's talk a little bit more about the game. Okay. Game. All right. What do you want to know about game this time? <laughs> Let's go deep. What okay. do you think we should talk about game? Last time it was the game of life. What do you think, you know, in your journey, how game has been, you know, in your life, in your journey? But this time, let's talk about the word game. I think it's so strong. And a lot of people see it. It can see it as a joke. It could see it like, yeah, a game. I know what game is. You play a game and then it's over when it's over. But I don't know. I, I feel like it needs to be more elaborate and just a little bit more deep today. Okay. So, game. Well, I think game is a word that has like a lot of connotations to mm -hmm. it. Like, it, I think it immediately gives off this like, when you hear the word game, like what's the first feeling you get, game? This is how I feel. I feel like it's like, um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say like hot sauce. <laughs> mm -hmm. Like it just hits like you. Like spicy. And it's spicy, but then it's like, oh, it's a good spice. I don't know. I just feel like it hits you. It, 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 to me, game is like, woo, at the beginning when I first yeah. didn't know what game was. Now, to me, game, yeah. Like, yeah. I love it. What kind of game? Let's do this. Let's game, play it. When I hear so the I word, see it in a different way. I see I it as opportunity. game, I hear it. It's just like, That's it makes it me is. like, it just feels like, ooh, like, you know? <laughs> I love like, it. It's, like, <laughs> it's just like. <laughs> you want to get up this chair. It's like kind of like sly, <laughs> but like not necessarily in a bad way. Yeah. It's kind of like, we could go anywhere with this, yeah. you know? I think that's the, that's the vibration mm -hmm. of the word. I love it. The word game. I love it. And then as far as like, I don't know. I mean, we talk about the game of life, but how do you go deeper than that? I think game, let's talk about, let's break it down. I think game has, like you said, many different things. So game is everything. Game is strategies. Mm -hmm. So finding different strategies. So I think a game is like this platform, this destiny, you know, a game of life. Okay we were um born we were put in this earth so to start this game of life 
you know, were born. We had to learn how to like crawl, you know, play that game. I got you, I got it. Now I'm gonna learn how to walk and I'm gonna learn how to run. So I think game to me is always continuous growing, continuous growth. And also along that is strategies. So a game, when I, when I hear it, it's like, ooh, like it has rules and stuff, but it has like strategies. Like, okay, so if I go here, then I can do that. But if I go there, yeah. it's just so much fun. No, actually, I love <laughs> that you said that because as you were talking, it hit me. It's like yeah. game is like the facilitator of learning. Yes. Right? Because it's Thank like you. if we I love came the way here, she puts it. With no, <laughs> if we came here with no like no context, we were just like, I mean, we kind of did come here with no context. Yeah. I think we're all kind of like, what's going on? But we kind of had like these inspiration, these ideas. Oh, we want to innovate. We want to build things. We want to make technology. And I think that structure is like the game. And I don't think the actual structure is the part that matters. It's just there so that you can go through the mm -hmm. steps to like learn and evolve. Like it's all there for your evolution. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I think the game is like, it's basically like a master tool mm -hmm. to like for evolution. Mm -hmm. Like the source. Yeah. Like where you can evolve from. Yeah, because it, it puts every, like it gives context to mm -hmm. everything. Otherwise you're just kind of like, everything mm -hmm. just kind of just like is mm -hmm. but now it's like even if we're doing it wrong right in america now it's like all right now we have a like we have a purpose like we have a my game is going to be i want to be the top ceo in my company or my game is i'm going to live totally off grid and avoid mm -hmm. this game over here and so but whatever your pathway is whether you're the ceo or you're the person living like in your eco home in the woods the structure for you to follow that path was set there so that you could you could become the person you're supposed to be like mm -hmm. it's like so that you could evolve into that mm -hmm. so yeah i think that's what the game is awesome at its root love it yeah mm. love it <laughs> love 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 ah that was awesome wow such a like yeah. a flow of so many like I don't know, like as we were speaking, like so many ideas, so much freshness, so much like, even as we were talking, like I think it happens, like when we're talking and we have this thing that we want to speak about, like more ideas come up. Yeah, and you get the more universe, inspiration. It's kind of like it flows, I feel it. I feel like the mm -hmm. universe here, like, ooh, they're speaking about this, like here, 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 like just. You're channeling, throwing. like that's what we are. Yeah. We're all conduits, we're channeling. Yes. So in moments like these that's why i love like having these conversations with people or like especially on live because it's like yeah now it's like i can let all of the wisdom just like flow through mm -hmm. me without like any barriers which is cool it is it is yeah. so what are the last things that we can tell our viewers today i know we spoke a lot i think it was an amazing conversation i would love to hear you guys comment and feedback about you know your thoughts about it what are your you know maybe um, I don't know for next time that Jocelyn will come on the show. Well, next time she's gonna cook for us because because we we, we want to see. So <laughs> okay, I mean I'm so down or, for the cooking little yeah, talk show well, at least where you like kind of, interview while I cook that. Be I do. I love it. I want to do that because I want. Um, I think it's so important because it's that is like I feel like the biggest energy fuel we can fuel our mind and strategies and ideas and like you know just everything but food is the source too like without food like if you don't have that fuel and the right one like my example today mm -hmm. um it, it's it's it can really um mess up what you're already like this beautiful yeah. thing that you created like in your you mind. Out of alignment. so i think that's so important you know and, mm -hmm. and in a different way i love the way you you say it you know i've heard so many people that are nutritionists you know and speak about why you should you know be healthy it is a lifestyle it's not just like doing these rules but it's just i love the philosophy of how you bring it out and the science and everything and i think it's gonna be so much fun thank you yeah i so. think so too and i i love cooking it's yeah. so therapeutic for me so i'm happy to and then you can tell us why what ingredients that. you you choose and where yes. does it come from and i can show you some of my you know i don't always put a lot of what i do in the public like some of the practices that I do mm -hmm. but there you know it's not just about cooking like you can speak to the food mm -hmm. and there's um, an environment that you can set that kind of just you want to add to the vibration mm -hmm. just like how you add all those little good things that we spoke about yeah. to your life 
Like you want to do the same thing. Like anything you're engaged in to be fully present with it, you have to enhance it with like everything mm -hmm. that you can. Yeah. That includes words. Mm -hmm. That includes singing. That includes dancing. That includes you know all of the tools that we were yeah. given to create with. And I think that's what um, I want the viewers to see. I want the viewers to feel. Mm -hmm. So it's not like oh my god, I'm gonna cook this egg or cook this. Just like I feel like this is the right moment that the universe has given us to like have that moment and taste life. I don't know. You yeah, know what I mean? no, yeah. Like so sit down present. and like, yeah, I gotta cook, but now it's not before because I gotta cook so fast because I don't go to work. It's like you have that time, understand what these ingredients mean, what this energy like flowing. Yeah. And I think that's really gonna change people's life. I think it's already changing people's life. I think so How too. I mean, so many people are like starting gardens now, which yeah. is so beautiful. I love and like, it. You know, just getting back in a touch lot of cooking. with your food. Yeah. Because, I mean, we have become so out of touch because like it's like factory produced at this point. It is. Yeah. It is. And I think even after this, it's definitely going to change a lot of people. Because you don't even have to hear it from people saying it's going to change. I think we feel it um, the Can't way we eat. To change. Yes. Yeah, but to change, yes. Uh -oh. <laughs> um, but I think it's definitely going to change the way we eat or we see things. Um, I love it, absolutely. So I definitely want to bring that back more. So sure. <clears throat> out of all these, so today the three subjects that we spoke about, what, what are the last words that you can tell the viewers today um, about what we spoke about? Universal love, about money, about game. Um, what's the last words? I don't know. Well, my we can last words... Are not about necessarily those well they it falls in there um Just was our first topic was when we talked about astrology yeah. what i want to leave the viewers with is you should look into your natal chart because there's so much more to astrology than than you know your aquarius mm -hmm. or your sagittarius if you look into your natal chart you basically have like your moon sign and your mm -hmm. rising sign and all these different parts of you and if you really study that that will tell you so so much more of a complete view about who you are so i think that's a really it, and it's really fun mm -hmm. to like do what's a good book to a book i've never read a book on it there's like um, so where have you gone like, i've what, gotten what it from a website search? there's like websites because it's based on what time you're born and where you're born so you would literally just like put it's um if you don't know what time you're born you have to like look at your birth certificate but you put in this like your date you were born mm -hmm. the place in the time and they'll give you the layout on that and then you can also go there are like astrologers and people who will do it for you like we'll okay. and then walk you through it and like break everything down which i am planning to do that as well okay yeah but i, I think everyone should do that i think it's so cool. i want to do it i think yeah. it's so interesting even like um another thing that i did a while back was like the numbers like everything oh, is so cool in numbers yeah oh and that's another is. good one with um your Life Path Number uh -huh. by, I think his name is Dan Millman, is the guy who wrote hmm. the book. That's a good book. Okay. And so, nice. yeah, and it tells you your life path number, which has like all these That's meanings for you as well. Mine was very accurate, so. Cool, cool. Yeah. I think it is. I think it's just, you know, I feel like we, we, we've been put here, you know, with some kind of code in a sense of like, okay, you know, to learn and the game of it, but we have five senses, you yeah. know, in a sense of, you know, we had eyes, we have, you know, to breathe, like just those senses, even though I know some people may not be born with those, but those senses, other senses come up actually, which is amazing. Um, but like, I don't know. I don't know. I, it, yeah. My mind's you know, going. We're going to have to do lot. another, we're going to do another episode. <laughs> my mind is going. Because we could just so. like talk about so many things. <laughs> so we'll have to yes. save this for the next episode. All, we'll talk on the cooking episode. We can get more spiritual. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's important. That's another subject that's definitely yeah. very Which important. Which will be interesting because I don't talk about that much publicly. Let's talk about that. Love it. So, well, thank you so much. Okay. It was such yes, a pleasure you having, having you. Me. No, this yes. is awesome. I love the beautiful office. I it's love so classic it. with the thank law you. books back there. <laughs> I don't know when's the last time it's been read. No, I mean, <laughs> no, I'm sure it has. But <laughs> actually, talking about books, I think it's very important for us to read. You know, that's why every show I try to ask them, um, you know, what's a book that you read, even if it's an audiobook. I think it's important to always keep learning, keep feeding your mind, and learning something different and new. I think sometimes we're so stuck in a structure of day to day, and now it's different. Like mm -hmm. now we're stuck at home, that day to day stuck at home. But, um, you know, reading about those books, so if you can get, like, the right name of the book, 
you know, yeah. so I can put it to the viewers at the bottom. I think it'll be very important so you can definitely in your time read about it and, and share it with us. You know, we'd love to hear Absolutely. Um, your opinion. Club. We should. I think we spoke about this. Did we? I think so. Like I a year ago. That. I think we did. Yeah. Somebody. I remember speaking to somebody. I'm sure it was you. Okay. <laughs> Sounds like me. Let's do it. Let's do it. Okay. After the cooking, we'll do like a book. Yes. Cool, cool, cool. Let's do that. All right. Okay. Cool. Well, thank you guys so much. This was so thank much you. fun. I had an amazing time. Happy Friday. Enjoy yes. it. Thank you again for tuning in at the Love Money Game. Share it, guys. Share it. Definitely. I know I'm going to listen to this uh, video again because I'm going to get more out of it. You yeah, know, sure. I think it's so important to to listen to it and get something and and yeah, let's share it. Share the love. One love. Remember, yes. <laughs> we are one love. We're one tribe. We're entrepreneurs. Uh, we're people that are just spreading love out Absolutely. here. So thanks again for Bye. joining us. Bye, Bye guys.